What's going on guys, it's you here bringing you another review on Fire Force. This episode, I want to say, was honestly pretty messed up. I'm going to say, pretty messed up, but not only that, not, not only do we have messed up stuff, but we have Charon, once again, being an MVP. And I got to give props to that man. This man did one of the most unthinkable things in this series so far. But let's get right into it. So we start off with poor Nautico still being so unstable and he is just going berserk. We saw from last episode that his levels are just increasing and we see this again in, with Vulcan like how it automatically spikes right after the conversation between well I guess you could say the, the Adola link that Nautico had with Shinra and we get a deeper dive to how he's been feeling like he has to do all these things you know he has to or else mom's gonna get in trouble and you know it's fucked up you know I, I know it's a little early for me to say this but it's really fucked up because we see how like he does great with grades and like and deep I guess we can go ahead and deep into this where we actually see like him having all this pressure to make sure that he gets the grades that his father wants him to have and that's something that honestly i can relate to growing up and i'm getting a little personal here i do that from time to time i was pressured and i'm sure most of you can relate as well to have better grades to be the best you know and strive to do things that they wanted that our parents wanted that they found that they, they think is best for us obviously it doesn't always work that way but it does happen and so with him we see that he's just crumbling through this and not only that but we had Rekka consistently haunting him so with all that we see that he just unleashes a crap ton of energy and we have Charon taking it all in this man is truly one of the biggest like beasts of this series he takes it all in and not only that but he reflects it back and I hate Homo and Inca. They're just excited to see him. I was like, yeah, you can clean up my mess. I'm like, I hate this person so much. I just can't stand how they are. Like, ugh. But Sharon, dude, make, taking it all in and being a reflector, staking, sticking to his guns, man. This dude, no matter what, he's always going to try to protect all of the pillars. Because that's his job. And honestly... It's interesting because we see like the relationship also about other protectors within, you know, this this whole entire series. So we have, I'll get to that later, but we also have like how he just kind of falls over and then Kurono steps in and he slices and dices. At this point, he has to like, all right, look, I, I need to calm down with the situation, you know, and just start slicing things up and... You know, we have Nautico's like, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. And this is where we have this moment between both of them. And I guess you could say, and thanks to Char and also pointing it out, it's like, it's like he's his protector. I mean, Kurono is strong. He's messed up in the head because he wants to bully the weak because that's what makes him happy. That's what makes him feel better about himself. And he tells Antico not to get any stronger, and that he doesn't have to push himself, that it's okay for him to be weak, because he's only a child. So, it, it's just kind of really messed up to see how these two have this kind of relationship, and it and it works. It, it works in a really dysfunctional way, and Nautico finally calms down. And it sucks, because this is the only way that kind of settles him down. Uh, and I guess if it works, it works. But Charin and the rest of the white clad pull away. And, you know, it, it was crazy to see them doing this. And so we finally have uh, the confrontation between, I guess, the president of the Hajime group and with Lich, Shinra, and Captain. They are all talking. And we see that he wants, they want to know, was like, look, are you guys involved with the Evangelists? You know, like, no, we have no relation. In fact, they have been causing us problems as of lately. And we'd like to work with you guys and creating another Amaterasu, which is a problem for them because they don't want to sacrifice anyone. And I'm glad Vulcan steps in because he honestly, coming in, he actually proposes an idea that actually brought life, I want to say, 
to the president's eyes like he's like you can actually do this he's like yeah i'm you provide the resources for me and i will make this i don't care about like you guys owning it or not i just want to be able to do this i'm gonna have to sacrifice any of my friends or any other person to, to be doing this and so hajima is going to be supporting them so i guess you could say they have a new ally and the experimentations are going to continue and we see at the end not to go smiling so you know good for him it's a great way of ending this arc and honestly i hope to see not to go again but guys that is it for me i hope you guys have enjoyed if you guys have leave a like and i will catch you later